What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dan Paul. We back in. We live for episode 10. Y'all already know how that shit go. Listen, so I wanted to pick back up on episode 9 where I left off with Takashi 6 9 um, pleading guilty to all the charges that he was faced with. And also, um, <clears throat> him basically just telling on the whole team, you know? Now, a lot of people was like, yo, what's the real shit, yo? How would you feel if you was in that position or in that predicament? Now, to be honest with you, like I said in my last episode, I was like, nah, I ain't going to be in that predicament. I ain't going to be in that situation because I was in a situation like that where I could have told on people, but that's not in my DNA. It's not in my, you know, in my genes. You feel me? Um, now, in this predicament, this man is facing 47 years minimum to life. 47, let me, 47 years to life. This young boy is 21 years old. Now, a lot of people don't follow Takashi like I do. Like I said, that was my young boy. I'm not going to switch sides now that he's facing time and that he allegedly snitched. Now, I'm looking at it like this. He got kidnapped. A lot of people forgetting that. He got kidnapped by a former member of his squad. His manager, the boy Shadi, has sexual intercourse with his baby mom. That was just revealed. And on top of that, his manager, who also had sex, like I just said, had sex with his baby mom, had stole money from this man and tried to get this man killed. So it's now it's like, all right, what loyalty do I owe you guys? If y'all notice, he was trying to distance himself before he got booked, before he got indicted. You feel me? Now it's to the point where it's like, damn, bro, you not getting out. The only way you're going to get out, the only way you're getting out is if you bail out. And then that's if the judge decided to give you that type of opportunity. Because there's only one charge that was dropped recently, which was the racketeering charge. You feel me? Now, he has a sentence here in 2020 in January. It's 2019 February. And it's to a point where, hold on, let me, let me rewind that. It's February, Black History Month. Let me, let me get that out the way. But um, it's February 2019, and it's like, damn, this young boy's still sitting. Is he going to be looked at the same like I spoke about in my last episode? I don't believe he will, you know. But then again, like 50 Cent recently just said, it is a lot of rappers that are getting um, passes for snitching and that are glorified, you know. He didn't say that, but he pay, I'm paraphrasing, like I said before, um, what he said, you know. Um, and then on top of that, he has... A baby mom, you know, I don't know the lady, young lady's name, but she's on Instagram, not Instagram Live trying to get a name for herself. I'm not understanding it, you know. At first, she was getting mad or jealous that he was supplying or flooding gifts to these other females that he really didn't have no type of attachment with. Now, now, she's getting upset that he snitched, right? But she's trying to cover up the fact that she's getting around. Like Tupac back in the 90s, you feel me? That's the shit I don't understand. She went on Instagram and said one of the things that I really don't understand. She kind of put herself out there and was basically trying to get some type of love for putting herself out there by saying this. I can recover from being a five. Hmm? Let me take a water real quick. Hmm. She can recover from being the thought. It's 2019. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. You know, the whole saying goes, once a hoe, always a hoe. This chick is really getting around and said, I can recover from being the thought, but you can't recover from being a rat. Now, that right there is a fact. And I wasn't even trying to rhyme. But the fact that she even said that, put herself out there as a young lady, is sitting here and is like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? You feel me? You're a mother. That's one and two. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to get some type of attention because you're six, nine, baby mom? You know, like, you, you got this young boy, Blueface, that's from um, L.A., that's out here um, making noise. <clears throat> Besides that song, Tatiana, I really don't know too many songs he has, but he's making noise. He's a new artist. He already allegedly ran down on her, according to his manager, Wack. Wack out here fucking... Talking about like, yo, man, he already ran down on that. I'm like, damn, it's another grown man talking about his artist running down on another chick. And I was like, damn, it's karma. You know? Remember when Takashi 69 was running down on um, 
Chief Keith baby mom. It's like, damn, but he was publicizing it. You know, remember that. But now it's to a point where he's behind bars and then you got other people trying to take their turn. He had a former member of his squad on Instagram saying, yo, don't we make a good couple? And she's sitting there like a fool, like <laughs> laughing, like, what are you doing on camera? Like, you humiliating yourself, yo. It's all, it's obvious, it's evident that you're doing this for attention. You know, but Free 6 and I, like I said, um, we don't know anything until all facts are presented. You know, it's all speculation. The media can paint a picture like a mug, you feel me? Picasso couldn't even discover it. And that's the thing where I just don't understand. We have to be attentive to what's true and what's not. Like I said, if y'all really follow his case, then you will understand that it's a, it's a touchy case and it's a sketchy case, you know? I really can't speak too much on it. When he said that he pleaded guilty to all the charges, it made me pop up like with the emoji face, like, like, like what? Like, why would you do that, bro? But then again, that indicates a plea is popping off. You feel me? He already got, like I said, he already got a, uh, a charge dropped. But off, after that, you know, I just don't like that all these rappers are acting like he didn't set a platform, in a sense. And when I'm saying when he set a platform, despite all the speculation that's going on, the platform he set is like, it was remarkable in a sense. Youngboy was doing this in a year and a half. Like I said, despite his music, when he was doing music lead in the industry, in the music industry, it was phenomenal. Youngboy was 12 for 12 on the billboards. You feel me? Youngboy just made his own self marketable. Like I spoke in my last episode. You know, he had a lot of fans, sold out um, venues. And on top of that, he was banned damn near from performing in, in uh, America in a sense. I'm being real. He had to perform overseas. Remember, he can't even perform in New York. But as soon as he hit the stage, everyone loved it. You know, he got that energy. He hit Philly. That was probably his, uh, I think that was his biggest performance he had in the United States. And uh, Made in America. He had that shit rocking. At the end of the day, his energy was different. You know, um, I don't believe that he's going to be free. You know, um, when I hear 47 years minimum, I don't know how the hell you're going to dance around that. But if T.I. had dance around them gun cases, would it, he did a year. But money talk, bullshit walks if the shoe fit. You know, that's um, Lil Wayne, um, Joe, I think. But uh, if he had the money for that, Takashi 69 better had the money to get himself out of um, jail. You know, so I'm gonna um, speak, I'm gonna stop on that topic and then I'm gonna roll over. I'm gonna roll over to um, the Nicki Minaj topic. Now, Nicki Minaj, right? <laughs> Nicki Minaj got some fans that remind me of Beyonce fans. Beyonce has a fan club called The Beehive. You know, a lot of people, they worship her like she's Jesus. Or God, you feel me? Like, they really do. You know, you say anything wrong about her, they defend her more than they defend their own parents. And that's a fact, in a sense. You know, I don't know why. The, the lyrics that she do kind of like traumatize these type of people. Uh, I mean, not traumatize, hypnotize these type of people. You know, because these people be under a spell as soon as they um, listen to her lyrics. You know, Beyonce has a beautiful voice. She can sing. But I don't see why people be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, yo, relax. And then going back to the Nikki. Nikki, I said one thing on Instagram not too long ago, and of course that got blown out of proportion. All I said was, Nikki has to be um, low key. This has to be um, killing Nicki Minaj low key or on the low. Someone was like, oh no, no. Why do Nikki always got to be mentioned? She's not worried about it. It was Meek and Cardi in the picture. You feel me? Meek and Cardi. Now, if y'all notice, Meek shows a lot of respect or he shows some type of um, some type of love to Cardi every time he's around. And on top of that, he has a song with her uh, on his album on um, championships called uh, On Me. Excuse me. On Me. And uh, I'm looking at it like this. She throwing shots at him still. You know, she was on this um, recent performance on stage. She basically 
was like remixing this one part when it was like Meek still be in my DMs, Meek still be in my DMs, and then Meek had to um, say something on Twitter, basically indirectly talking about her. And then she recently went on this man beat and threw a shot at him, you know? Someone was like, why do you think Nikki is worried about me? Because she's still worried about me. If you know females like, I think I know females, because I don't know females like that, but I think I know them, because females don't know themselves like that, if y'all catch what I'm saying. But back to what I'm saying, the shot that she was throwing, she said something like, you leave the queen alone, niggas get friendly, dog." Now that's basically indicating that Drake and Meek still cool again. You know, you know, Drake, I mean, Meek is basically in defense, like, yo, Drake my man, that's my man, we been cool, like, but we had that little fall through. Now I'm looking at it like, what's wrong with that? They being men, they settle, um, they settle their differences, you know? Was anybody saying that when she was hype, switching sides when Meek and Nicki broke up? And she was taking pictures with Lil Wayne and Drake? Or are we gonna sell, and that's, that's the team, that's the home squad. You know, at the end of the day, they did do two songs, Rico, and they also did Amen. So I'm pretty sure they was cordial before that. Then the thing I don't understand, she mentioned, I was in a courtroom, no J's and B's. Then that was true. She was in a courtroom, even speaking to the judge. You know, but I'm sitting here like, yo, why are you still concerned about this man or worried about this man? You know, if you so in love with a man who just recently got your name tatted, Onika, like, what we doing? You know, now that one song, I feel like, um, the drip, Barbie drip, the drip too hard, I think you murdered that beat. You still got the bars. And I just heard your new song, Barbie, um, Barbie, Bobbyana, or whatever. I think that song was hot. I still feel as though you lyrically hot, but when you drop the bullshit, it just makes me think that you're not hot anymore. You keep telling or indicating that these people are your children, they need to learn their A's and B's. Like these, I'm pretty sure they learned their A's and B's for 10 years. You've been saying this for the longest now. Like, like why, we, gotta, we gotta switch it up. You keep telling everybody, these people, your sons, like Cardi hitting us with these bars. You know, y'all two the top two females that's rapping right now. So we need to switch it up in a sense. We need authenticity. And we need you to just focus on what you're doing instead of focusing on my man Meek from Philly. You feel me? Because he winning right now. He got Robert Kraft rocking the championship chain. You know? You got him saying, my man Meek. You got me. You know, he got the billionaires converting over in a sense. You know how they say, once you go black, you never go back. So he definitely with the brotherhood right now. So don't hate on the young man winning. And speaking of winning, 21 Savage was winning until, you know, Ice, Ice, baby, came out of nowhere and snatched him up. It's sad because, you know, he has a debut single a lot. And he was talking about a lot of problems that he was facing through the hook. But he failed to mention that he was facing this problem, which is the Ice problem, you know. Now, a lot of people may be confused or lost on what the hell I'm talking about. I don't know what ICE is abbreviated for, so I'm not going to break it down. But if you know uh, what I'm talking about, he basically had, he's basically an immigrant in a sense. Uh, he's from the United Kingdom. Um, he has an Aspire visa for over 14 years. Um, he was born over there, but he was raised in Atlanta. A lot of people are saying he deserves to stay over there. You got people like Tommy Lauren. Um, and I'm pretty sure you know who Tommy Lauren is. She always coming at the culture, the black African-American culture. Um, I was lost in a sense because it made me think like, damn, this man is maturing. He's bettering himself um, through the musically and also the way he was moving, you know? He said he wasn't going to wear chains anymore. It didn't have any value and he didn't see the, sub the, um, the, the, the importance in doing that um, or the meaning in doing that. Excuse me. Also, the fact that the people he was working with, the way he was moving, if you watch 21, the way he was coming out and the shit he was talking about as soon as he was rapping, I mean, um, when he began rapping in the industry, it was to a point where it was like, damn, this boy on some drill shit. Now it was to a point where it's like, all right, he's maturing to a young man, he's um, helping his community, he's doing all these different things, and you just snatch this guy up as soon as he has one of his biggest albums, you know, ever in his career. But it's a coincidence that he get booked soon as 
he mentioned he drops an Instagram live or a video indicating how he hate rats. And I'm sitting here like, wow, like these coincidences be happening like too common, you feel me? Too common to me. I don't understand why 21 Savage is in a position that he's in. A lot of people don't understand that or realize he applied for a visa due to application in 2017, which is still pending. So we're not going to act like he didn't make the attempt to, you know, renew his visa. Also, this is why this bull Hove is different. You're probably like, what the hell are you talking about Hove for? Hove just hired, breaking news, Hove just hired a legal team from Rock Nation. Hired a legal team from Rock Nation, you know, in defense for 21 Savage. 21 is not a part of Rock Nation, but 21 is a part of the culture. And Jay-Z is damn near at the top that can speak for the culture, you know, and, and, and musically, you feel me, in the music industry. And 21 Savage is a music artist. It's to a point where it's like, yo, are they trying to make black people an example again? <laughs> I just don't understand. I didn't speak on this Chris Brown situation. Chris Brown was an example that they was trying to make, but they failed to make it, you know? And he's trying to sue this girl. But on top of that, just like it was someone recently, Remy Ma. Remy Ma was speaking on um, the show with Joe Button about uh, the fact that these females is out here lying, putting these guys in positions to go broke. She said, and let's say if the, the table's turned. Let's say if the table's turned, when they said that that girl had allegedly got raped by Chris Brown, all right? Chris Brown would have had to come back and forth to Paris paying lawyer fees. You feel me? They sit here just thinking like, damn, like what the fuck is going on? You feel me? That's the shit I don't understand. They tried to do that with um, Chris Brown. They fell. Chris Brown's still doing what he's doing. He even shot a damn music video after he got released. Like, ah, I dancing around like, y'all can't catch me. How, you know, basically, I'm we, you all the African-Americans, you know, back in the United States in the art world, like, what the fuck is going on? Y'all keep falling. They're taking the third. Any girl would love to be with Chris Brown, you know? That's the truth. But now, all right, y'all failed to get Chris Brown. Let's move on. Let's move on to the guy that's changing his life around, 21 Savage. We about to go after him. Now, 21 Savage, you know, he was changing his life around, and he doing a lot of different things for his community, like I said before. Now, I don't understand why they're trying to go after him at this particular moment. It's not like he triggered them to do something or he stood out in a, in a public in a negative way. I don't understand it. You know, it's just making me think like we have to be very mindful of what's going on. And what I was speaking on before I had um, lost my train of thought was the attack that transpired or yeah, transpired in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. I don't understand this shit, yo. These people is losing their damn minds. You feel me? They losing it. I don't understand this shit. It's like, it's like, you see what's happening on the news from these Caucasians that are brutally attacking or harassing or hurting or harming the community. Someone's in a lunchroom, not just a someone, a young lady's in a lunchroom and got slammed on the table by these guards or security. Probably NTA, that's what we called them when we was in high school, um, or NTA. Three guards was next to this young lady, slammed this chick by the, her hair, grabbed her hair, slammed her on the table. I really didn't see this part because my friends were saying that they seen some punches. But seeing some punches being thrown in the mix of that, man, I'm telling you this now. I went to Martin Luther King High School. You know, Martin Luther King, you know, he, fight, he was fighting for justice, you know. But the king I went to, it was different. You know, they was violent. You feel me? It was different. 
And I'm telling you, that security guard wouldn't have made it out if he would have slammed a damn female, black female, in the cafeteria around black students. You tripping. And there was nothing but white guards. I don't understand that, yo. They need to start getting these white guards out of urban communities, yo. Because they, they freeze up and they get nervous. They don't know how to adapt. They are not relatable. At the end of the day, don't get me wrong, I'm black. And when I'm around certain communities, I know when to be on my shit and when to be attentive and be aware. But just imagine if you're not from the community and you're in this position, you, you, you freeze up. You know, oh shit, what am I gonna do? You feel me now, it's like, all right. You feel me? I have no other choice but to panic. And now I gotta react on some scare shit. And that scare shit can have me on world star, on the news. Basically, I'm saying reacting in or responding in the way of them killing someone, shooting someone, hurting someone, or harming someone. And that's a fact, you know. Go on YouTube and you will see it. Or watch the local news. A cop shooting. You really don't hear that many cop shootings. Think about it. You don't hear that many cop shootings for white on white. As far as Africa, I mean, cops shooting white, um, white um, civilians. You really don't, to be honest with you. You know, um, the videos I do be seeing is civilians giving cops hard times and them getting away with a lot of different shit and running away. But I see African Americans getting harassed all the time over the littlest things. I'm just being honest with you. You know, I have a couple, um, Small things to cover, you know. The Sixers is back, you know. I think this may be the best starting, the, the best starting five in Sixers history. To be honest with you, I mean T, T behind the camera, oh shit, he's shaking his head. He said, oh shit, he's shaking his head. I mean, I'm a young and compared to him, but you know, he said, um, he said no. But I feel as though, um, from what I've seen, um, for the last over the last 20 years, you tell me if I'm wrong. Over the last 20 years. There we go. I got, got a head nod. All right, there we go. We got a head nod. Now, I feel as though over the last 20 years, the best starting five of the head. Um, now, on paper, we need to see how they um, tra um, transition on the court and see if the chemistry is up, um, up the beat. And um, I feel as though they can compete. Definitely um, a favorite right now in the East um, to me. Um, I think um, Tobias Harris was the missing piece that they needed, um, a score, a shooter and someone else that can spread the floor like J.J. Reddick. Um, also, you know, Anthony Davis, Pelicans, Lakers, that deal don't look like it's went, it was going through unless something happens at 11.59, you know. Um, they saying that the GM for the Pelicans is basically in a hot seat. They saying if he make this trade, he gonna get fired, you know. And it's to a point where it's like, what are you going to do with Anthony Davis who don't want to be there? He said he don't want to be there. He's under contract for another year after this year. You know, his dad already came out basically saying that he don't want his son to go to Boston because he's seen how Boston um, treated Isaiah Thomas. So Boston said, F it. Danny Ainge said, yo, I still want you to wait and we're we going to throw Jason Tatum in the mix possibly. <laughs> like, loyalty is crazy. They don't give a damn about loyalty. Jason Tatum was snapping last year um, in, the in, in the playoffs without Kyrie Irving. And you just want to say, F it. You feel me? I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Um, it's a lot of big things that's popping off um, for the Dead Paul Show. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to have a guest. Uh, not going to really discover his name, um, but I'm going to have an artist. Um, a lot of people know him in the city of Philadelphia. He has a lot of murals going around. Um, he has a lot of different... A lot, he has a lot of clientele. You know, he has a lot of different shit. I can't even really say, say anything or describe it, but he has a lot of different shit going on. Um, he's a talented artist um, from Philadelphia, and he's an OG, you feel me? And on top of that, we have another episode where I got another entrepreneur that's doing his damn thing, going to show you how to run a business or explain how to run a business and what motivated him to be a um, business owner and for him to be self-employed. But I appreciate y'all for being here for the episode 10 of the Dev Hall Show. And um, we're here sponsored by Headquarters Media, and it's the Dev Hall Show. Y'all already know how that go.